it was by design. The producers designed it so that Kendall would have this really hard experience in paradise and yeah. Joe would get to have the love story. love we are diving into a bachelor in paradise 2021 recap this is season seven episode nine it is a brand new week in paradise we are finally no longer needing to talk about brendan and piper it is a very fresh clear i guess not clear because a hurricane came through in this episode but other than that <laughs> other than the storm it is a brand new week in paradise and we are very excited to be able to talk about some new couples and like juicy, interesting couples that we haven't been able to talk about yet this season. So today we'll be yeah. diving into the whole Je Joe and Kendall situation. That was a whole, oh, it was heartbreaking to see. Um, yeah. We'll also talk about Marissa and Riley and that conversation that they had, which was really wholesome and moving. And then the Tia and Blake situation and how, what happened in their conflict, why it happened and how we think we could have avoided it. Um, so yeah, we're just going to dive right in. Let's start with the Joe and Kendall of it all. Julie, what are your thoughts? <laughs> okay. I have a lot. I mean, first I'm team Kendall in this. I saw that the internet yes. was very much against her. They're like, I don't want to go into, I don't want her to like get between it. Joe and Serena, she's not. I thought they could turn a new page, like heading into paradise because it's such an incredible and fun opportunity to date and have fun. But how can you not feel longing when you see someone rediscover all of this magic in your ex, even though it wasn't totally. right for you? Like we have totally. to remember that like Joe, he was an OG contestant, so he could settle into like this really triggering environment. And then he had this emotional buffer that was in the form of Serena. And then Kendall came in and she was completely unmoored. Like she was an island. She was on her own. And like in my coaching, I like to think about ways you can like reintroduce that early sense of like attraction to like recreate this like chemical lubrication again in couples who are in that life building stage with each other and they want to find the magic again. So I would suggest things like seeing them from a distance and remembering the full person for who they are and thinking about ways mm -hmm. you could like creatively fall in love with them again instead of just interacting with them as this narrow concept as your partner in this really specific way. So it helps mm -hmm. you see them anew like through this thoughtful observation. Kendall is being forced to just go through that. So I don't blame mm. her at all for like how she's feeling. I really want people to hold her with empathy because we are watching torture on TV right now. She's watching the totally. only man she's ever loved fall in love with someone else. And it's totally bringing up all of these painful emotions. So like, I totally. think she's thinking of regret. She's thinking of like a lot of pain. Um, the timing is so off though that she and her processing is so immense that I do think it was the right decision for her to leave. The conditions of the show made it like really Machiavellian for her to stay. Um, even like when she was leaving, them intercutting with Jones and Serena kissing, what was that? Like, did it have yeah. to go that far? Yeah, she needed to leave for herself, for her mental health. I really respect it. I want to send her love. Yeah, totally. I think yeah. too, the thing that the internet was getting confused about with this whole joe and kendall saga and joe and serena i think that i mean it was very clear that the producers cut up kendall's sound bites to make it sound like she was there to get joe back when it's very That's clear that she wasn't and you can see in other interviews that she's done in podcasts so with with other um you know outside the show she directly says she's like i wasn't there to get back together with joe i was there to find new love just like he was and like when you listen to the episode and you hear her this, the things that she's yeah. saying you can tell that they cut up her quotes to make it sound like she was saying like i'm here for the same reason as you because i love you and want to have like you know i want to talk to you and like we had such a great thing and like they cut up her quotes to make it sound like she was here to get back together with him, but it was very clear that she wasn't. She was here to meet new people, connect with a new boy, you know, potentially find love, do the thing over again, the exact same reason that Joe is here. So everyone who's like kind of, I, I see on social media, everyone's like, Kendall, why did you even come? It's like, 
why are you directing that energy at her? She she came for the same reason Joe came, and it mm-hmm. just so happened that the producers decided, like, okay, we have both Joe and Kendall coming. Let's have Joe get to the beach first and then have Kendall come in as Joe's ex. She was kind of cast in this role of, like, crazy ex or whatever, or cast in this role yeah. of sad, weepy, piney girl who's not over her ex-boyfriend. She was cast in this role and they created the storyline around her. And, you know, if the roles had been reversed, if they chose to put Kendall on the beach first and let her be there and meet someone and thrive and like, you know, start an early connection with someone and then Joe came later, I'm sure that roles would have been reversed and Joe would have been just as sad and mopey and weepy, which he was when he first got to the beach. He we was. Saw that he we ha- can't forget that. Yeah. Yeah. He had a really emotional reaction to getting to the beach and being like, oh my God, this is where I fell in love with Kendall. And so yeah. we can assume that it would have been the same if Joe had come, been the one that yeah. they decided to cast as Kendall's ex, right? right. And so it, to make it seem like, Kendall in particular was there like for some harsh nefarious reason or that she just is some like loser who can't get over her ex or that you know she's like trying to break up a happy couple Joe and Serena like it's just not true and like I'm kind of upset with the show for like Mm. twisting her storyline in that way to your point Julie like Kendall was put through fucking torture she was torture torture situation a much yeah. harder position to be in than joe was in and it yeah. wasn't it was by design the producers designed it so that kendall would have this really hard experience in paradise and yeah. joe would get to have the love story and so you know yeah. you can't really fault kendall for that it's i think that if anything she handled that situation with such grace and maturity such grace. she handled the I'm situation putting her in my wall i'm like if she's getting a poster and putting her in my wall i'm making a shrine <laughs> this is a woman <gasps> no! that knows how to like have emotional resilience and it was so beautiful like i actually found it, it really was. beautiful that she kept saying like i'm like so happy to see you like happy thriving you have a new part like this new like connection like that yeah. i'm happy to see it it's just hard for me like she was being so candid she wasn't being bitter about it she wasn't lashing out at joe lashing out at serena trying to break them up even yeah. she wasn't even being jealous she was just sad she was just grieving the end of her own relationship and like yeah. to me that shows such emotional maturity so i have so much appreciation for the way kendall handled herself on that uh on that beach i i think that she did the best that she could considering the fact that bachelor in paradise really yeah. kind of gave her the shortest straw of the bunch so the shortest i agree i think this season we've seen a lot of like queens on this show like natasha mm. kendo deandra there's been a lot of people that have come through and it's like their love stories aren't typical in the way that they find a man maybe they get something bigger out of it like deandra <laughs> left with a lot of self-worth like natasha she's still getting her ed (laughs) her ed in it all and i think kendall being able to have like some closure and just have such a short straw kind of know Mm. that like she got wrapped up in this narrative that isn't true to who she is and like what was actually going on for her and she handled it with grace she just left she was like i don't need to be a part of this like dynamic anymore i don't have to be right Right. and like kudos to her for knowing like hey like I see what's happening here and it's like it's time for me to go I gotta take care of myself I want Joe to be able to continue to thrive and like I'm just gonna go remove myself from from the situation like Mm. wow that is that is strength that is bravery that is I mean I yeah kudos to you Kendall we we support and appreciate you here and we also support Joe and Serena like they were also I mean I love them they were very sweet like they clearly have such a good authentic connection like we were saying this in the last episode like I think we didn't end up um putting it into our cut but we were talking about like I mean it's so clear how much they like just really like each other like they love each other it makes me (gasps) giddy like seeing how Serena looks at Joe I I've know, never, it's like, I, dear God. I can't so, look at it, it's pure. too real. <laughs> it's like, it's so pure, it's so yeah. like, oh. I know, so, I know. you know, yeah, yeah. so whatever, we, we support Joe and Serena, and we support Kendall. I think that, like, there's, like, no harm, no foul here, and I just, I hope that the internet kind of goes easy on Kendall mm-hmm. and shows a little compassion and empathy for her. Um, and we can still support Joe and Serena along the way. I will even say one thing that I loved about Joe and Serena and the way that they handled the situation, in addition to the way Kendall handled the situation, Serena was so supportive of Joe, like after the whole, after Kendall left and Joe was sad and they came to talk together. Like Serena, like it was really sweet. It was the, yeah, it felt like the most beautiful thing about that conversation was 
you know, Serena didn't make it about herself. She didn't make it about like, oh my God, are you over me? Oh, you're crying. You must like still love her. Like she didn't try to like twist it into something that it wasn't. Like they just have this ability to just talk about, you know, Joe's very real relationship with Kendall, her, his very real feelings for Kendall. Like they were able to talk about that without turning it into like a conflict between them or without turning it into like, what does this mean about for us? Like, you know, Serena was able to be there for Joe and support him through his moving on from his ex. And I think that is so beautiful. I think that is what like security yeah. in a relationship looks like. Yes. So I so yeah. agree. And the last point I want to say about this before we move on to the next couple is what you said about production. I'm so glad you brought that up, Kelly, because Kendall was never the person trying to throw a wrench into Joe and Serena. It was production. They wanted to see drama between like a very stable, secure couple. They're kind of like the real villain in this situation. Like the way they yes. treated Kendall, the yes. way that they like kind of try to get between Joe and Serena, not purposely, but just like, let's throw in this like variable and see what happens. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The they internet totally... should really be looking at production. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes. It's like the thing that I think the internet is just totally missing is that like the only villain in the situation, it is not Kendall. It is just yeah. production. Production mm -hmm. made it so that they were going to let Joe form a really strong relationship with someone. And mm -hmm. then they were going to say like, okay, let's see if we can blow it up. You know, that mm -hmm. was their idea. That was the storyline that they crafted for the season. And, you know, Kendall was kind of like, collateral damage in it which really sucks and I, I yeah. feel really bad anyways kudos to everyone we're very proud of everyone and how they handled it joe serena kendall they did not yeah. get to you we we see you we see the way that y'all <laughs> handled this with so much grace and maturity and um we are happy for all involved kendall i know you're going to be out there thriving so riley marissa this is a really good couple to segue into because they also had a really beautiful moment between each other demar came on the beach and it brought up these feelings for Riley of, oh my gosh, I really like Marissa. And Marissa was like, I really like Riley, but we haven't talked about our feelings. It's been so fun. It's been so playful. And it's clear that while they have these deep emotions, they haven't had like the talk, which shouldn't be seen as a scary thing. It's just like honest communication about where we're at to see if it's worth leveling up and I really mm. identified when Marissa didn't want to talk to him about it at first because mm. she was like I don't know if he's gonna tell me something I don't want to hear but it's not about like scaring someone away it's about seeing if they want the same thing and if they don't understanding that it's mm. not an indictment on you it's just a mismatch about what they want and you have to yeah. feel like you can tell someone scary things and then yeah. they're gonna be able to receive it so yes. i just love that i loved when he was crying and opening up to her my heart was like just so full seeing yeah. that moment between each other what did yeah. you think about that conversation and how marissa thought about it how riley received it and how they kind of interacted with each other yeah, I mean, overall, I think that that whole scene was so wholesome. I was like, wow, we just get to see, like, wholesome, sweet love on my television. Like, oh, it's just really <laughs> sweet. I was just so yeah. happy to see them able to, like, communicate and work through their their issues. Um, I definitely agree with what you said, yeah. Julie, that, like, Marissa had kind of come in with this. Like, she said something along the lines of, you know, like, oh my god, our relationship is so good. I don't want to ruin it by having this conversation. Oh, and that's We've all been there. <laughs> I know. It's so classic. It's like a very classic issue that people have. They have this sense that if you talk about it, it's going to break it. But honestly, most often, that the opposite is true, right? By not talking about what's going on, you are allowing issues to fester under the rug and to become bigger than they need to be, right? Or you're letting yourself kind of continue in a relationship with your kind of um, blinders on or with your, you know, gog, whatever, you know, you're, you're allowing yourself to continue in a relationship without actually knowing what's mm. going on. You don't know where yes. you're going. And so that is even more dangerous to the relationship than having the conversation. So even though the conversation, it's difficult and you might find a truth that you don't like, it's better to know that truth now than to proceed like, it's not that, oh, if I avoid the conversation, then, you know, we're just going to keep having fun and, like, I won't ruin it. It's like, if you avoid the conversation, yes. what actually happens is that, you know, you end up, like, the truth is still there. The thing that 
you it's still there it's just not spoken you just don't know so you're just allowing yourself to continue to operate it's not the conversation triggers the truth the truth is there you just it's just your choice whether or not you want to face it or not and so it's such a good way of putting that that's so true people just would rather walk around it and it's like you're gonna fall into it at some point do it intentionally or be unintentional like you can exactly Mm -hmm. yeah so well said and like I, one thing that I was thinking about as Marissa was, was talking about all that and saying all that, I was like, hmm, like, it kind of felt to me like, almost like a, I, like the, the alarm bell that went off for me when Marissa was talking about that was like, is there maybe some past like trauma here? Or like, has she experienced like some kind of adverse or negative reaction from a past partner that made her believe that if she brought this up, things would go south or that they would get mad at her or they would get upset with her or she would hear something that she didn't want to hear, right? I kind of got that sense. I was like, why would you be afraid of Riley and saying something to Riley? I mean, he's been so good and sweet to her this whole time. I was like, why would you be afraid of that? And she even said something along the lines of like, I've been lied to a lot. And so it just, to me, the thing that uh, I was observing, I mean, knowing nothing really about these two, just from the way she was talking, it just got the sense that she had had a past that didn't come up yet, that is probably in play. And, you know, we saw that, like, she was so emotional when Riley was at that party, right? Like, she was crying so much. She was having such a hard time thinking about him being there. And, like, that to me signals there is, like, a core insecurity or fear or Mm. trauma there that Marissa might have that she will need to eventually address and heal. Like, the conversation focused on Riley and Riley opening it up, and I'm glad that that happened. But I do think that Marissa there's probably more to what's going on for her. Like there's probably, my guess is that in the past, she has like had conversations with like ex partners where she's like expressed some kind of need and it was received poorly. Like that's what my guess is. And so that's probably what she would be afraid of with Riley. And so anyways, all to say like, I'm happy that they had a good conversation. I hope that they continue to have more. I think that, um, you know, they just need to make sure that they can communicate about whatever Marissa was afraid of so that Riley like knows, you know, knows to make sure that, you know, that she doesn't get, get up in those fears again. Right. Like Riley needs to know like what she's afraid of so that, you know, he can support her and Marissa herself needs to kind of maybe do the work to like heal that trauma, right. Whatever that trauma might be. So those are the things that came up for me in the conversation. I think it was a good first conversation and I hope they continue to have more such an astute observation about like this is that point of the season anyways right when like you're having fun on the beach and now as relationships deepen past traumas do resurface like the mm-hmm. way that you are in relationships do come up like we're gonna mm-hmm. talk about Tia and Blake in a little bit but that's another example of like past baggage coming into the present relationship mm-hmm. if it's not something you've worked on and maybe your partner they are a mirror to you in some way. Maybe they are bringing that up to you. Yeah. I agree that yeah. like Marissa definitely had some signifiers that maybe she's been in like relationships where trust was a factor, where her truest yeah. self maybe wasn't being honored. Yeah. They are on the right track, Marissa and Riley. We see that they are starting to have these conversations. Riley yeah. was able to open up and be vulnerable. Hopefully Marissa will be able to do the same also in future conversations that they have so that they can address this and like, you know, tackle it head on together. Um, and they seem to be such a sweet couple. I kind of, I have faith that they'll be able to do it. I think they both have such good hearts and good intentions. So, uh, yeah, yeah we're rooting for them. Or I know that I, I am. I just, I, they're my favorite couple on the, on the yeah. beach right now. I kind and of agree. Me and Kelly were on the same page about a lot of the couples and the concepts and the themes that were showing up because I think that Riley, Marissa, and then Tia and Blake that we'll speak about in a second, they, this was a really good teachable moment of like, how do you get on the same page with each other about the way that you express love and love languages mm. is a mm. really good way to like, just understand okay this is the way that my partner receives and interprets love so the conversation that Riley Marissa had was really deep because Riley did talk about his family love languages is a little bit more of just like okay this is just a way to develop 
um, and foster connection. So this was developed by this guy named Gary Chapman. He was a marriage counselor and he worked in linguistics and he studied couples and noted that people predominantly display five different styles of expressing love. One is acts of service, which is when you love through action and not just through words. Another is words of affirmation, which is when you verbally build connection with affirmations and like sweet little nothings. Gifts are a visual demonstration of love and quality time is when it's devoted one-on-one -on -one time, like your phone's being off, just really being in contact with each other and physical touch is really straightforward. It's exactly as it sounds. We all toggle between all of these different styles of relating, but we have one or two different ones that we really love to use and we really want our partners to use and it specifically fills out our love tank. Marissa, I think, is really into words of affirmation. She She's really a means, words of affirmation. She loves gal. it. I get it. I'm the same <laughs> you way. Can, <laughs> you can tell that she loves she words of affirmation. She it. And maybe Ryan yeah. has more physical touch or like acts of service because... I think he's acts is my guess. Yeah. Like Marissa said something where he had a deep talk with Noah. I forget who it was on the beach, but... Yeah. Or Ivan and Marissa was like, where's my deep conversation? I want mm. that conversation. And mm. that's not something Riley knew about Marissa. Maybe he's yeah. thinking, well, I get her coffee in the morning or I make her breakfast yes. in the morning. So yes. like, why you know, does he, she need it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and she, she even said that she was like, he's so good with his actions. He's always like doing things and showing me like, like doing all the right things, but he doesn't like use his words. He doesn't say it. She literally <laughs> said that. And I was like, Marissa, it's the love languages. Marissa. <laughs> In his head, he's like, I'm being yeah. so... And this is the whole point of love languages. It's like, you know, there could be miscommunication if you don't understand what your partner's love language is and what yours is. And, like, in this yes. case, like, I'm sure in Riley's head, he's like, I'm being so clear that I really so like Marissa because I'm yeah. showing her with my actions. I'm, like, not just spouting words. I'm, like, doing things from her. I'm there with her. I'm spending time with her. I'm, like, you know whatever, getting her coffee in the morning. Like he's probably thinking like, I'm doing all of this stuff. She must really know that I like her. And the funny, and then she was like, oh, but he's not saying anything, right? He's not using his words, right? And so yeah. like clearly there was like a little bit of a mismatch. I'm glad they were able to kind of work through it. I hope that they kind of continue to talk about like what Marissa wants. Clearly she wants love, um, I get words it. of affirmation and I get, I get it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this kind of like really neatly brings us into the Tia and Blake thing because we heard with Tia the exact opposite. Whereas Marissa was like, Riley get, does all the actions, but I don't hear the words. Tia was like, oh, Blake like says the words, but how come he doesn't do anything? He doesn't, there's no action. I need actions, not words. Like, so you very clearly see, like they said the opposite things. And like, both of them are supposed to be like, oh my God, these guys are not showing up. But yes. it's like, no, I don't think it's like that. I think it's like people have different desires or needs or preferences when it comes to how they want love to be expressed to them. And that's what love languages are all about. Tia wants actions, not words. Marissa wants words, not actions. And so, you know, it's really just about figuring out what do you want? Tell your partner that that's what you want and figure out what your own partner wants so that you can give it to them the way that they want it, right? Mm. You can give them the affirmation that they need the way that they like it. Love languages, they're classic. It's a classic, classic. tool, but you know, because if you can see, it comes up all the time in relationships, just all the time. Oh, it's such an easy way to get on the same page about something. Like I love, this is why I love like personality tests or assessments. It's just a really neat way of understanding mm -hmm. yourself and what you don't like about the things that may put you in a certain bucket. Like, mm -hmm. and I do love the fact that with Riley and Marissa, they, <clears throat> they were able to like have that conversation with each other and Tia and Blake weren't. Um, yeah. that, that whole dynamic came with a lot. It's not only a mismatch with the love languages. I do think There's that a lot going on there. <laughs> she was asking, I mean, she showed her baggage. She was like, I typically am with men that don't care about me. And mm. because she had the rose that week, she did feel very powerful to ask for it. But the way that she asked for it was like out of a sense of entitlement out of a sense of like mm. you need to do this for me because like James will you know fight for me he will like mm. put in the effort he will put in the time and Blake was just sitting there eating a frittata or something he's like what is going on like yeah wait do I have to fight for you like maybe he's this not used fair, to like, it 
yeah I get to it. be fair, I get it. like I was yeah. like with you, like on uh, like Tia. I was with Tia in the sense of like I was with really Tia kind of being a little like yeah. He not wasn't trying. showing up. He yeah, wasn't he trying, was like, and I think she was asking effort. for the littlest thing. She was like, "Can you please like just do something to show me that like you're into me?" Mm-hmm. I don't think yeah, he yeah. likes her that much either. And Tia is asking for him to demonstrate it, and he's doing the bare minimum and like. The way that it just kind of went from zero to a hundred really quick, where they were like yelling at each other, or not yelling, yeah. but it just got weird. I feel like you can really tell when a guy likes you. I just feel like, or when yeah. anyone likes you, I feel like you can just tell. You can tell that you they're can. like focusing on you, or paying attention to you, or trying to talk to you, or making eye contact with you in the room when you're in a group situation. You can just tell when someone likes you, right? Or when someone is kind of at least like giving you energy and attention. And so, what Tia was saying, which was the idea that like oh Blake was like not doing anything like I think that that's super valid I think where the where everything kind of went downhill was then being like and now I'm gonna be mad at you for not liking me enough because it's like you can't yell at someone and force them to care more about you than they do if they don't care about you they don't care about you and yelling at them is not gonna help (laughs) you know it's like in their conversation I mean he even said he was like tell me what you want me to do so I can show you like that I like you and that I care about you tell me what you want me to do and like she was like oh well it it's you should have like known what I wanted you to do before Mm. and it's like girl mind reading is a red flag yeah that's a red flag like he's not a mind reader he can't like magically know what you want unless you tell him and like this idea that like he should just know that he should do this like big gesture it's kind of like well I don't know you guys just met and went on one date so like maybe he doesn't realize that that's what you want and that's okay it's okay for you to want that but like you can tell him and then like then it's up to him to deliver on that but like she was like I shouldn't have to tell you what I want like you should just know what I want it's like girl like no one's gonna just know what you want like no one's just gonna like magically read your mind and understand that that's what is needed and so I do think that he was being pretty like low effort and lackadaisical whatever that word is he was being like pretty like aloof and like I don't like you know I agree with the thing that set her off I don't necessarily think that her approach to talking about it made very much sense based on their conversation do you think that he's walking away thinking like I'm gonna do something nice for Tia now like (laughs) no of course not let me plan a surprise (laughs) right I mean maybe he will I guess we'll see but like you know it's like Mm -hmm. you uh, like yeah you come into the conversation with the intention you can talk about your needs but you're supposed to you, you want to come into the conversation with the intention to connect, not to confront. And I felt like Blake was just, well, first of all, I think Blake was a little defensive in the conversation rather than like understanding that she was expressing a need. Like her response, his response was very like, his response was very like, oh, but I'm just a simple guy. You should like, oh, but I'm, I don't Ugh. like, he was just kind of like making like these weird defensive comments. Yeah. Wasn't understanding that she was expressing a need Versus on the other side, she was being confrontational. He was, like, making a bid. He was saying, like, hey, I want to, like, do something. Like, let me show you that I like you. What can I do? And she was like, nope. Like, it's too late. You already fucked up. I'm mad at you. And, like, you just have to say I'm right. And that's the only way to to make this work. Tia, you need to just, like, put down your, uh, like, feeling of, like, oh, my God, I got, uh, I've been so wronged. And be like, okay, I hear this guy trying to connect with me. I'm upset, but let me see, like, how I can, like, meet him where he's at and, like, try to do something. And I guess in that sense, Blake did kind of do that. He did at least say, like, all right, like, I don't understand why you're upset, but I'm going to do something to, to, I want to try to do something to address your needs. So he kind of tried to do it at least. But, yeah, that's where I see that the two of them were, like, kind of failing in that conversation. This is an Mm -hmm. example of how conflict it's really just a cry for connection. It's really just Mm. a way to like meet each other in the middle and conflict is the bridge. Anger is an amazing emotion. It tells you everything you need to know about Mm. the things you're not getting. And they weren't able to affirm each other's point of views, which is both, it's valid for the both of them. So they should be like, I see what you're doing, but this is what I need. I haven't historically had this in my past relationships. When I don't get this, I think X of you. 
And then Blake could come in and say, well, I'm doing all of this stuff. I feel defensive because I feel like I'm putting in a lot of effort. I don't think he is, but maybe he thinks he is. (laughs) No, that's my personal opinion. And then he could kind of like affirm where she's coming from they both didn't want to affirm you're right it was not want to affirm yeah it was very much like i'm right and you are coming at me sideways and now i'm pissed and then it became this argument about like the approach because it was not okay how she came at blake and it wasn't okay how blake wasn't able to validate a very simple request that tia was making but the request was shrouded in a lot of like anger and a lot of and, stuff from the past that, yeah. like, that's a lot to unpack and a lot to, like, yeah. be confronted with when you're just sitting there and someone comes up to you and is like, why aren't you putting in more effort? It's right. like, I didn't know I had to be. <laughs> right. Let's right. talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you can't, I think it's like, the, the part of it is also, like, just, like, assumptions, right? Like, mm. her just assuming that he would know or just assuming that he should just, yeah. like, know exactly what she's thinking or what she wants or what's upsetting her and then like being upset at him for not knowing I think that's like where uh, people do this all the time in relationships I see all the time from the clients that I work with just like we get like really upset at our partner over something and then I'm often like okay like did you tell him and they're like no not directly and I'm like so why are you upset that he's not doing this if you didn't tell him that that's what you wanted and you know Mm -hmm. it's like if you didn't tell him like totally he's not gonna know he's not gonna know and so you know for Tia it's like she told him and then he was like okay let me do it and she was like well it's too late I'm already mad at you and like I think that's (laughs) where it's like you need to be able to like your anger is telling you to your point Julie your her anger told her what she needed but then she needed to allow him to come in and connect with her which she Mm -hmm. didn't allow him to do Oof, Um, it's too vulnerable and they're really comfortable being more defensive and angry vulnerability is the hardest emotion to step into it's so hard I think the issue is that I just feel like this will come up again like you know that's the thing it's like with conflicts it's not as simple as just like, I really want this thing and I'm going to be upset at you until you give me this thing, which is also kind of like, the, that kind of, it was a similar thing with Marissa and Riley. And Marissa was like, I really want Riley to like affirm me and tell me that he's like falling in love with me and like open up to me. Like I really want all of those things. And like, I'm really upset and scared and full of fear until he does it. And then he did it and she's like, oh, now I'm happy. But it's like, girl, this is going to come up again. Like again it's going to come again. up again. Mm-hmm. And like, you need to be able to talk about what is so distressing to you about the situation. Like, why is it so distressing to you? Why are you so freaked out if you don't hear the words of affirmation? Mm-hmm. Why is that freaking you out as much as it is? And did it with Tia. It's like, why are you like, what? <laughs> like the two of you, like him just kind of throwing in like a dramatic gesture next week. Yeah. Like, that's what he's going to do. Like, that's not going to fix the underlying problem of why they were fighting and like that's actually what needs to be done it's not as simple as like well now I'm just gonna do big gestures for Tia and she'll be happy now like it's not as simple as that there's more Mm -hmm. underneath there that needs to be unpacked and like a band-aid we'll fix it temporarily but not long term Mm, such 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 a smart thing to say a lot of people think that about relationships it's like the happily ever after thing you've done it once so now the relationship is fixed it's no these conversations are not one and done it's ongoing the deeper you get with each other the more that your past your family dynamics all of this stuff just comes up in the surface and it's a lot to deal with and you really need to make sure you have a strong connection to someone so you can be vulnerable and that was the difference between those couples riley and marissa were able to be vulnerable with each other because of how much they care for each other tia and blake I just don't think they're there yet. So they're kind of just at their posts, like the well-defended posts where they're just looking at each other as if like, you're the reason why I'm not getting what I want. It's like, you kind of have to work together on this. Yeah. Build a bridge, not a... Build a bridge, yeah. Yeah, not a gun turret. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they're just like (gasps) making their little like post and it's like what are you doing just like meet in the middle build something together (laughs) right exactly (laughs) we're gonna be back with a three hour episode next week it's pretty brain melting to have it be that long but i think it's gonna be super fun for us to dig into let us (laughs) let us know if there are any other couples that you want us to analyze next week 
like the video, subscribe, tell us what you're thinking. We want to talk to you. So we'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye.